Okay, this is the very next edition of the Ring of Honor 2005 uh, short DVD review. It's only four shows for this edition because the, the next edition, I'm just going to focus on the, the triple shot Manhattan Mayhem final show that I know, know where to run the three best consecutive shows in ROH history. Uh, so, for the four shows here, the first one is from uh, the first show from March. This took place on March 5th, 2005. This was actually probably the worst show of 2005 it was the trios tournament um yeah i mean it, it just this really this show was really tough to watch uh i think the crowd was really dead for it the tournament just did not go over well for whatever reason people just consider it a failure uh there is some bright spots on it there was an excellent match uh a first round match with samoa joe brian danson and bordell walker uh the guy from fip versus uh spanky james gibson and nigel mcginnis that was a four-star match. That was probably the only bright spot on this whole show. Everything else just really dragged. Uh, Jay Lethal actually defeated John Walters to win the, the pure title here. So we had a title change, but the match barely even reached the three-star level. Um, eventually, it came down to the main event. The main event was actually the Rottweilers, which was uh, Homicide Rocky Romero and Ricky Reyes. Ricky Reyes just sucks. I'm sorry, he just, anytime he was in a main event type of match, the crowd was always dead for it. Um, so, yeah, it was the Rottweilers versus Generation Next, which consisted of Austin Aries, Jack Evans, and Roderick Strong. This is okay, maybe like three and a half, maybe three and one quarter. Uh, really, the, the good thing about this was it perfectly set up an, an Austin Aries uh, homicide match. Homicide actually ended up getting the gringo killer on Aries uh, to get the pin. So if, if you if your team won the match, then everyone could get whatever the hell they want. So each each guy actually could get a title shot or a, a tag team title shot. So Homicide elected to take his uh, title shot at the first show of April. Uh, okay, so we get to the next show. It's Back to Basics. Pretty clever title because really they had a, a whole anniversary celebration and then they had the trios tournament. So yeah, uh, Back to Basics, just a regular show. So uh this is an okay show. It's an average show. There's some good stuff on here, but there's some stuff that's pretty mediocre. Uh, Spanky versus Jack Evans was okay. Uh, this featured Cocobana and Delirious opening up the show with a pretty good comedy match. Uh, people really are hiring their comedy match from 2007. Uh, I think it was from This Means War 2, actually. But yeah, not a lot of people talking about this one. That was a, This one was okay. Uh, we got Homicide and Roderick Strong. They had a, a very solid three-and-a-half star uh, Mid card match that was an excellent match. Like for this match, you can really tell Roderick Strong was really starting to get improve a lot uh, during once 2005 started to get underway. You know, he, he really got a lot better, and how, him and Homicide just had a, a nice, fast paced, hard hitting match. So that was a good match. Uh, James Gibson versus Rocky Romero, just another excellent James Gibson match. Gibson had a lot of great matches in 2005, and this was just another one of them. Uh, him and Romero just tore the house down. This is like three and three quarters. It was really good. Um, and a lot of people do think James Gibson was the MVP for 2005, which is saying a lot because a lot of guys had great years uh, in 2005 for ROH. Uh, all right, so the main event from Back to Basics, it was uh, CM Punk and Spanky versus Samoa Joe and Jay Lethal. This was uh, pretty good. It's just an uh, excellent, excellent tag team match. You know, a lot, a lot of talent in this match. You get to see Joe and Punk go at it again. And this match really did a great job putting Jay Lethal over. Uh, it was actually supposed to be Carino, but, you know, I've heard you can never really trust Carino as a booker. And he pulled out and went to 0-1 or probably something like that. But uh, Spanky filled in for him, and it, I think he made for a better match. Spanky looked pretty good here. Spanky had a, a great first half of 2005. I'll give him a lot of credit. And uh, speaking of Spanky, we get to the next show, Best of, of American Super Juniors Tournament. Uh, okay, let me say this. The opening match is the best opener in ROH history. You get Brian Danson versus Spanky. I'm sure some of you guys have seen this on the Stars of Honor DVD. But, uh, yeah, just a tremendous first-round match. And it's also on the Brian Danson uh, Rise to Glory DVD as well. But, but Danson and Spanky just put an excellent wrestling clinic here. I mean, the near falls are crazy. It's just really, really an awesome way to start off the show. However, this... Show is one of the most screwed up shows in Ring of Honor history. Uh, so you, they brought in a couple guys from New Japan Pro Wrestling. I think New Japan actually booked the tournament, which was horrible. The the, the overall tournament, even though it had the great opener, then Brian Danielson and Spanky was part of the tournament. 
uh, the rest of the card just was awful. You know, until the main event. The main event did save the show. But, you know, they, they there's this guy called Dragon Soldier B. And he was his matches were just awful. I mean, the crowd the crowd chanted, uh, don't come back to him. And he actually won the friggin' tournament, too. Uh, you know, Black Tiger and Alex Shelley had a decent match. And then another good first-round match was actually James Gibson and Roderick Strong. That was really good. I think that's also on Stars of Honor DVD. Uh, then the finals that actually ended up being Black Tiger and and Dragon Soldier B, which was awful, uh, just an awful tournament, uh, yeah, there was actually a, a BJ Whitmer and Jimmy Jacobs versus Smojo and Jay Lethal, uh, Dan Moff actually injured, got injured in a car accident, so, uh, the, the tag team titles were up for vacant, so, uh, BJ Whitmer was allowed to pick a partner, and he, he chose, uh, Jimmy Jacobs, and they actually won the belts, so this is what started their, their title reign here. Uh, and the ROH World Title match in the main event, we had Austin Aries and Homicide. Uh, excellent match, very underrated. Uh, Aries and Homicide just put on a tremendous fast-paced match, a lot of great near falls. It was it was excellent, and we've never really seen Aries and Homicide have any other matches. So th I think this is the only time they wrestled. Then it was it was a great match. Maybe they wrestled in FIP. I'm not sure. But uh, Best of America Super Juniors tournament. There's some good stuff on here, but you know there's some really bad stuff. So it's a mixed bag. Maybe like a 7.75. Uh, all right, stalemate. Excellent show. This show sets up Manhattan Mayhem beautifully. I mean, you want to say Ring of Honor is really not, hasn't really been known for a lot of storylines, but every single match on Manhattan Mayhem, I mean, I mean, this pretty much set every single match up. So you can't really say Ring of Honor has no storylines. They had a lot of great storylines going into Manhattan Mayhem, and uh, this show is just proof of that. Um, you know, Roger Strong and El Generico was a good match on here. Uh, show stealing match for the pure title, very underrated. Jay Lethal versus Spanky. Another good Spanky match from 2005, and, and Lethal is really coming into his own as well here. Uh, that was a great match. We had CM Punk and the embassy, first the Embassy. This was really just a scuffle. Punk was just, uh, he cut a promo, and then the Embassy just tried to beat the shit out of him. And then Bobby DeGrain, he didn't try to help out. And then they just pretty much raped Punk in the ring. And then Punk cut a br pretty good promo. This sets up the, the dog collar match between Punk and Jimmy Ray uh, for Manhattan Mayhem. This did a great job of building that whole storyline and matchup so and then uh alex shelley actually won a, a four corner survival match to earn himself the roh world title shot against austin aries and manhattan mayhem uh so in this match it was shelley versus joe versus nigel versus Col colcabana actually the first fall if he won the first fall which joe did win he, he earned a pure title shot so then he was done for the match and then it came down to nigel and uh alex shelley and alex shelley won and earned himself the, the title shot against Austin Aries. So uh, this is a pretty solid four corner survival elimination match. Uh, it was it was pretty good. Uh, Shelly Shelly went over here. Uh, so next we get Austin Aries and James Gibson. I, I think this is a tremendous match. It, it, this is probably better than their final showdown match. The final showdown match is a lot more uh, appreciated and and more well known, I guess, because it had a better finish. But I think the wrestling was a little bit better here. But uh, the finish was kind of a, a double pin, so a lot of people didn't go home happy. But they did a lot of crazy stuff in this match. They gave each other like ten straight brain busters in a row. They were just trading the brain busters, and uh, technically, this is an excellent match. And then we had Brian Dance in the Homicide match number four in the Best of Five series, the No Disqualification Lumberjack match. Uh, excellent stuff. Uh, this is pretty good. Uh, the first three matches weren't anything special, but th this one got a lot better. This is just really fun. Danielson actually suplexed Homicide into all the uh, Lumberjacks, which is a pretty cool spot. And then uh, this is just a nice combination of brawling and uh, technical wrestling. Actually, Danielson did a lot of great wrestling in this match as well. So, uh, yeah, this is pretty good. So, stalemate, very good show. It's, it sets up Manhattan Mayhem beautifully, and this is like an 8.25 probably. So, check it out. All right, that's pretty much it.